Now to the crisis in the Middle East. Israel continues to pound sites in Gaza in retaliation for the attacks by Hamas. It appears Israel is preparing for a ground offensive, amassing thousands of troops near Gaza. The war is sparking protests here in Chicago, too. WGN's Dana Rebic is live in Lincoln Park with more on that. Dana. Well, the latest in Israel, we know that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has created a wartime cabinet today. And as you mentioned, now 360,000 Israeli reserve uh, reservist soldiers are positioned. Uh, this comes as sorrow, fear and anger is evident on both sides of this conflict. in solidarity and anger and grief. Palestinians and those who support them sending a clear message. We ask that the U.S. immediately ends all U.S. aid to Israel. Before marching through the loop. Politics aside, there's a lot of civilians and a lot of family members dying by the minute. Chicago police officer Mohammed Darabe lost 10 of his relatives in Gaza. Two surviving children, two-year-old twins, are now orphaned. Another child still alive but severely wounded. A seven-year-old boy um, basically uh, in hospital um, in life support and uh, her uh, six-year-old daughter, Zena, um, they uh, pulled her out of rubble. Israel has continued its airstrikes with 1,100 dead in Gaza and more than 5,300 wounded. The only power station there stopped working after running out of fuel. Israel also halting supplies of food and water. At least 1,200 have been killed in Israel, including 22 Americans, since Hamas militants invaded on Saturday, taking 150 people hostage. Their houses were being set on fire. That people were trying to kidnap them. We were seeing bodies laying on the floor. A last message that uh, my brother received from her was that uh, they shooting at us and I'm hiding. Ohad Harel's sister-in-law, Sharona Shuminas Harel, has been missing for five days and was at the Israeli music festival where 260 people were murdered. Talks are underway to allow U.S. and Palestinian civilians in Gaza to leave the territory through the Rafah border into Egypt as the threat of an Israel ground invasion is looming. The people there, they can't get in and out. They're bombing them mercilessly while they're stuck there. They've hit hospitals. They've hit residential buildings. This is a humanitarian crisis. They are condemned killing any innocent people. It doesn't matter whether it's Israeli or Palestinian. In this case, we need peace. We both sides need to uh, uh, seek peace. President Joe Biden says that talks are still underway to try to figure out how to safely extract uh, U.S. citizens who are being held hostage in that area. Also today, the State Department raised a travel advisory alert uh, warning U.S. citizens right now it is not a good idea to travel to Israel. Live in Lincoln Park, Dana Rebic, WGN News. Thank you, Dana. And the president is reiterating tonight's support for Israel and outlining how the U.S. is helping its ally in the Middle East. Already we're, uh, we're surging additional military assistance to the Israeli Defense Force, including ammunition, interceptors to replenish the Iron Dome, and we've moved the U.S. carrier fleet to the eastern Mediterranean, and we're sending more fighter jets there in that region. And made it clear, made it clear to the Iranians, be careful. In another show of support, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken left the U.S. for Israel today. He's expected to meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Meantime, Illinois Congressman Mike Quigley sees parallels between Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the Hamas attack on Israel. We need to unite our allies to help the, uh, the country that has been attacked. So there's parallels here. Uh, they're, they're different conflicts, but some of those issues are the same. Uh, U.S. showing consistent determination to defend an ally, the only democracy in the region. He's also expressing concern about Iran, saying the regime is a state sponsor of terror.